Okay, so uh, on with the restoration of our uh, Honda Eight Horse outboard. Um, I know I've got no spark on this uh, this outboard, so it's not going to run. I've got no spark, so I'm just going to run through. I found the fault. I'll be honest with you now. I know what the issue is. I've got spark sorted, but um, I thought it might be interesting just to show you some of the tests and checks that I did to get to that point. So just might help somebody with troubleshooting the, the spark issues on their own uh, Honda four-stroke outboard. I think this is uh, the later 1997 model, but I believe all the earlier ones after the points to see the eye will all be the same as this thing. So, all right, let's get into it. First thing I'm gonna check is the uh, the exciter or the uh, the trigger circuit so this is the trigger that runs into this cdi and it runs off the camshaft it has a little sensor inside there and we're just going to do a, a simple ohms test to see what it reads um right i'll get on with the the, the check-in so you can see i've got my meter here it's just on a uh, continuity so i've unplugged the unplug the uh, trigger unit I'm just going to go in there and see so I'm getting 0 0.089 on there actually I like to change the range let's change the range mega ohms I think I get a better read in here so there you go 115 ohms which I think is about right for the, the trigger unit. So 115 ohms on the trigger unit. Now, if I measure that, where it goes actually into the CDI unit, it's open circuit. You'll get no reading going into the, into the CDI unit side, but where it goes into the sensor, 115 ohms, which I believe is a good reading. The next one I'm going to check here is this is my exciter circuit, which is housed under the flywheel. So under the flywheel here, you've got your magnets flying around. We've got an exciter circuit here, which again is just another coil unit. And this sends the charge circuit to the CDI unit. So on this one, I'm just going to go to earth on it. Oops, and we're getting 335 roughly, between 100 and, what's sitting there down there, it's around the 330 mark, obviously my earth's not very good, there we go, 327 ohms on the exciter circuit. Another couple of quick ones here. Is our, uh, we've got our two uh, secondary HT circuit. So this is a wasted spark. So these are your spark plug leads. And the way to measure this particular coil system is we go in on one and we measure across to the other one in there. And there we go, we've got 30 kilo ohms. So 30 kilo ohms on the secondary circuit. So we've got a good circuit on that side. And we've got a oh, primary circuit over on this side, which goes to a coil, which I should really disconnect. Let's just see if it gets a reading. Without going through there. It's a bit all over the show, isn't it? Because I haven't disconnected it off the blimmin' now. I haven't disconnected it off the CDI unit. There we go. 1.2 ohms, one ohm. So one ohm through the primary circuit of the coil. 30,000 for our secondary circuit. We've got a good exciter circuit. We've got 
a good signal from our so everything should be working technically so it comes down to the cdi unit there's a neutral start switch on here which we can check so let's uh let's test that while we're here while we're at it so that goes has a black and a white and a blue wire going to it so let's unplug them and once again we're just going to test continuity so wire in there onto that one there and we've got 0.4 of an ohm through there when it's on if we put it into gear nothing so our neutral start switch is working okay so we can eliminate that as a problem let me just plug these back in so blue to blue That goes back to the CDI and the black goes back to the CDI as well, black and white. Never make sure them seals go together properly so it stays nice and waterproof. Don't want any unnecessary corrosion going on. Now, this is the neutral kill switch here, so that's just an earth there that goes that green wire goes straight to the earth and then back to the cdi so that's just an earth cable for the kill switch which i've got disconnected at the moment you'll see in a bit i'll put the uh the only other one we have on here is the alternator um charging circuit again this is based under the flywheel and on this one I'm getting really low readings on this, so I'm not sure if it's working correctly, but let's have a look, see what we've got. Like one ohm, it's a bit erratic, but I'm getting really, really, really low resistance reading through that, which worries me slightly. So I don't know whether the charge circuit's going to work. But I'm not worried about that at the moment. We just want this engine to run. The only other circuit that runs through here is the oil light. Now, the oil light circuit comes up through here, through this yellow cable here. And that's a pretty simple one there. So the yellow goes back to the CDI. This yellow wire goes down to the oil lamp, which you can't see, it's just behind me meter. And then goes across through this red wire up here to our oil pressure switch, which is just in here on the side of the block. So what I want to check through that again is that we've got continuity to earth which, there we go, 0 0.7, 0 0.9 of an ohm. So we've got good continuity for our oil light, which tells us that the bulb isn't blowing, the sensor's not open circuit. Uh, so that's basically everything on the, on the, on the trigger side or the CDI and the um, the main ignition side of the, the the engine. So the only thing left that we haven't checked is the spark plugs, and that is where I found the fault. So I'm going to screw them out now, and I'll show you. So these are NGK DR5HS, which is uh, a resistor plug. So, which is the right plug for the engine. Now, let's test them. So, I've got this lead here, and just to prove I'm getting continuity. I test on here 
and get no reading at all on this plug. Test this one. I got reading. So I put it down to faulty spark plugs. So let's put some new plugs in it and see what happens. Just one last thing I want to point out here on the um, on the ignition system of these blooming engines is uh, <coughs> you can see here the the connection on your primary comes up here. It's a little bit of stainless steel comes up onto your main bar that goes through the coil. That's your mounting point here, but that connection's critical where it joins onto the onto the block just here. It gets corrosion in the back of there, a bit of salt water and stuff like that with the aluminium to the to the stainless. Stainless and aluminium don't go together well and they do create um, corrosion between the two. It's just the way the two metals react with each another. Um, that's why stainless steel fittings on aluminium boats aren't always a, are the greatest uh, thing. They could form a kind of an electrical connection, electrolysis type uh, condition. But so this is a common issue on this, that that connection there gets bad and when that connection's bad on there, you've got no air through here. You lose your primary primary circuit connection and you can lose your spark. So just something for you guys to be mindful of and it's probably one of the first things you can check when you do have an old outboard that's been sitting around for a long time and you've got no spark. Check that connection there. Because, um, yeah, so again, I think it's a common issue on these engines. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the electric section and uh, we're on to the carburetor next. Oh my God, wow. It's full of sand. <laughs> oh my word, look at that. It's full of sand. Wow, no wonder it wouldn't run.